Okay. The biggest problem that doctors face when diagnosing a patient who they suspect has serotonin syndrome and is showing some of those symptoms we just mentioned is that it resembles other toxicological conditions and there is no laboratory test that will unambiguously confirm a serotonin syndrome diagnosis. All right, that being the case, let's look at how doctors go about differentiating serotonin syndrome from a related condition called neuroleptic malignant syndrome. This will also lead us into talking about the different treatments doctors may use for these two syndromes. But before we get to that, let's look at the similarities between serotonin syndrome and NMS. Okay, first off, when it comes to vital signs, these conditions look almost identical. Both can cause hypertension, elevated heart rate, rapid breathing, and extreme fever or hyperthermia above 105 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 41 degrees Celsius. Both can also cause excessive salivation and sweating, as well as increased muscle tone, though in different muscle groups. Like as serotonin, as we mentioned, uh, it's mostly in the lower extremities, whereas with NMS, it's throughout the body. And if left untreated, NMS or serotonin syndrome, if severe cases, can be fatal. So now let's turn back to the differences. The main difference between these syndromes is the causative agent. That is the type of drug that can bring about one or the other. For serotonin syndrome, it is an overdose of drugs that cause an effective increase in the amount of serotonin available in the brain and body. For neuroleptic malignant syndrome, they're usually drugs that block the action of another neurotransmitter called dopamine. And those drugs, specifically the ones that block D2 dopamine receptors, are often used to treat psychotic symptoms in schizophrenia. And if you want an introduction to dopamine or dopamine and schizophrenia, check out my other videos and my playlist on dopamine. Okay, so the patient's drug history alone will help a lot in determining which syndrome they have, but there are also a few key differences in the diagnoses that would seal the deal. The difficult part is that not all of these differences will show up and people tend to show different kinds of symptoms. However, serotonin syndrome develops fairly quickly, within about 12 to 24 hours of overdosing, whereas NMS takes from about 24 to 72 hours or sometimes even longer. Yet the time course of serotonin syndrome is partly dependent on the particular drug that caused it and how long that drug takes to metabolize. So whether it's a slow release or not and how big the dose is. Some other differences are that serotonin syndrome can cause pupil dilation, but NMS usually doesn't. NMS can cause the skin to appear pale, but serotonin syndrome typically doesn't. Serotonin syndrome can increase digestive activity and thus the sounds coming from the bowels, but NMS usually does not. NMS causes what is called lead pipe rigidity throughout the body, meaning that the muscles are extremely stiff and hard to move, whereas serotonin syndrome may increase muscle tone only moderately and mainly in the legs and feet. And serotonin syndrome often causes overactive reflexes and muscle spasms in the lower extremities, but NMS usually reduces reflexes overall. There are also differences in the cognitive domain, where serotonin syndrome is more associated with agitation and anxiety and NMS with stupor, eating less, and the inability to speak. Now, the treatments for each condition begin similarly. By the patient discontinuing their use of either the serotonin increasing or dopamine blocking drugs, and if the doctors are worried that there's a dangerously high amount of the drug still in your stomach and digestive system, they may actually give you activated charcoal. Yes, actual charcoal, which can help absorb some of the drug molecules before they cause further problems. For NMS, the next stage of treatment may be dopamine increasing drugs to compensate for the lowered signaling in the dopamine system, which is causing the NMS. For serotonin syndrome, on the other hand, the next step may be giving muscle relaxers or sedatives like benzodiazepines, which help turn down the activity of the nervous system by interacting with the GABA system. And if you want to learn more about that, check out the videos on GABA but it, they basically turn down the, the uh, activity of the nervous system in general and then reduce serotonergic signaling along the way simply by turning down all the, or many of the uh, neural circuits throughout the brain. 
In more extreme cases of serotonin syndrome, however, the doctor may also prescribe a drug that specifically blocks serotonin signaling as a kind of failsafe. 